Hi, I'm Shane. Today we're going to be testing our utility tree shear. This is our entry level tree shear that we offer and it has some really good features for uh, simple cutting of trees that make it really handy in the woods. Uh, to start off with we use a very large uh, cylinder. It's a 5 inch diameter cylinder with a 12 inch stroke. Uh, at 3000 psi that uh, provides about 59,000 pounds of force at the cylinder pins. We're pushing a one inch thick blade that's made out of high strength AR400, not only for strength but also because it's abrasion resistant, it's going to last longer. And the opening then at the jaws is about 14 and a half inches from the tip to tip. And so that means you can get about a 12 inch tree uh, into the jaw area. The frame plates are one inch plate steel, both top and bottom. And the knife shears very cleanly because it passes between both of those plates when it closes here. We also have half inch uh, teeth on top and bottom to kind of help grip the tree as you're shearing, keep it from slipping out. The frame pivot pin is a three inch pin that's greasable. And the knife pivot pin is a two inch diameter pin. The pins on the cylinder itself are inch and a half diameter, both uh, base and rod. So we're going to start off by cutting some smaller trees here. Um, I, I don't know what type of tree this actually is. Uh, it's similar to a popple tree. It's a softwood. Um, this particular tree is about a five or six inch diameter. We're going to cut it off as low as we can and we'll show you what the stump looks like. It's important when cutting trees to have an idea of which way the tree is going to fall. Now the advantage of this type of shear is that the blade acts like a wedge. And so when you're cutting the tree off, the tree will naturally start to tip when the blade starts pushing up on that side. So generally, the trees will fall to the right. But you have to look at every tree that you shear to determine whether it's uh, plumb or whether it's leaning one way or the other. Obviously, if it's leaning one way, it's going to have a strong tendency to fall that direction. So be careful when, you're, uh, when you analyze each tree have an idea of which way it's going to fall, make sure that your fall area is clear. Okay, so we just finished cutting the first softwood tree. The trunk diameter at the base is seven inches, and we got down to about inch and a half to two inches above the ground, which for most applications is really good. You can't shear uh, lower than one inch simply because the frame plate on the bottom is an inch thick. Um, if you have soft soil, sometimes you can uh, drive the shear down into the dirt and actually get lower and uh, but you shouldn't need to do that unless the stump causes an issue afterwards so we just got done cutting another pair of trees here it was one tree with a diameter of about 10 inches next to another tree that's about a six inch um, I cut it from a bad direction I probably should have cut it from this way but we had some material back here so we were trying to cut it so that it would fall into the open so we could get at it later too so I came at it from this angle, which is kind of a, a tough angle, but we did get it clipped off. You can see that uh, even though I didn't cut through the whole stump in one shot, uh, that's how you cut a larger tree. You can snip at it where you cut maybe half of the tree and then push in and, and cut again. So it is possible to cut trees larger than 12 inch diameter with this tree shear. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take and we're going to section this tree as it lays on the ground. I want to talk a little bit about the frame features. Um, we have a very strong steel tube frame here made out of two inch by three inch rectangular steel tubing. And that is, it acts like a push bar. So on some trees, if you have a little trouble with them, 
uh, tipping one way or the other, you can give a little pressure with this push bar. You can push on it a little bit as you're cutting to maybe push it to fall one way or another. And we use quarter inch wire mesh, uh, steel mesh here. And this is to keep branches out of the cab and, and from the skid steer, especially nice if you're cutting bushier type branches. Most of the trees we're gonna be cutting today here will be, uh, you know, taller, slender trees. But if you're cutting something like a cedar bush or something, this comes in really nice uh, for keeping the branches out of the cab area. I also wanted to demonstrate how you rotate these jaws so that you can section up uh, trees that are laying down. First thing you do is you pull the linch pin out of the horizontal pin. You put your foot on the step here. Grab the handle, flip it up, and then put the linch pin into the vertical pin here. So that locks it in the vertical position. Now you can easily drive along and section up trees that are laying on the ground. So fall is a really nice time to clean up along the edges of fields after the farmers have taken the, the crop off of the field. Here we have uh, quite a large tree that's encroaching into the farmer's field. So we're going to flip the blade up into the vertical cutting position and we're going to cut these limbs off. I'm going to leave them fairly large so that I can pick them up and carry them somewhere with the skid steer. Um, I don't know what kind of tree this is. Uh, it might be a kind of willow. Uh, but it does look like it's it's fairly large and fairly fairly hard. So we'll give it a try. We'll we'll cut off these limbs here at least flush with the edge of the field, and we'll get this this growing area back. Okay, so we just got done finishing up on the trimming of this willow tree here along the edge of this field. We took about four or five main cuts, cut off some very large branches. Uh, they fell down, I picked them up, moved them away and trimmed them as we went. There's still a lot to clean up here, but I can do this by hand. But you can see we gained probably about 20 feet of usable field right here just by trimming these trees back. So it's a good idea to do this kind of work uh, when you have expensive farmland. Just to wrap up here, we decided to try to cut off a 13 inch diameter uh, popple tree. This is a very mature tree, had a lot of branches on it, it was very bushy. Um, it was very solid, so it was harder than I thought it was going to be. The first cut, I went through about two thirds of it, and then I backed up and took another cut and I finished off the rest of it. It fell to the right, just like expected, so I was very impressed that we could cut off such a large tree with such a simple tool. So you can really see uh, by what we've done here today how versatile this tool is. Uh, we did a uh, branch trimming uh, for a field. We did some clearing of small trees and also a large tree. But what's really nice about it is after you cut the tree down, you can either section the tree up into smaller, more manageable pieces, or you can actually grab the tree and drag it somewhere and push it in. You know, you don't have to deal with it. Just push it away and let it rot. So a uh, really useful tool for land clearing uh, clearing up along uh, fields, fences, and also making trails.